Hello, my name is Timmy Downey from Aesthetic Landscape Care, and today I'm here to share with you something we call Love em and Leave em. Uh, it's actually a name that's been coined to a process that's come from a few years of trial and error and eventually evolved into a practice that not only saves our business money and time, makes life easier on the crews, but has a whole host of other benefits from environmental to municipal uh, savings. You're going to love what we have to say today about how to take your burdensome, what may be considered difficult autumn leaf cleaner process and to make it into a cinch and snap. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, I decided to change how I did my business, wanting to have less labor and a, a more gentle approach, if you might, more responsible approach to how I did my landscape and business uh, practices. And through a series of trial and errors, uh, but most importantly, examining over the course of season after season after season, as I attempted to grind and mulch leaves up using some less developed equipment, I began to see the benefits where I was saving time, saving money in terms of disposal cost, disposal time, taking stuff away from the property. Then with the advent of two additional new pieces of equipment, it, it hit the ground running like a freight train. There are two things you need to adapt to your existing equipment. One is a mulching blade. The one I prefer is what's called a gator blade. You can see these fellas here have these nasty little edges on it that pulverize and shred the leaves up into tiny little pieces. There's also this blade, which is a double edge, double height blade, which also can be used. It doesn't matter, it's your preference. I prefer the gator blades. The second piece of equipment you need is something that holds the leaves in the mowing space, the chamber of the mower, sort of like a mulching plate. What this device here does is it creates an air vortice, which allows the leaves to stay suspended in the air until they're finally chopped up and ground up where they can fall between the grass clippings, I'm assuming the grass plants, or fine up where they can be discharged into the beds. It also offers benefits of safety uh, throughout the rest of the mowing season. You have your great big leaves in the autumn, and this is what we reduce them down to. Literally, confetti. This stuff will fall between the grass plant blades or it will go into the ground cover beds and it disappears in a short period of time. Then you might have to ask yourself, well, why would I adopt this practice? If you don't mind me, let me just tell you my story for a few minutes. Uh, about 10 years ago when I changed my business practice, my configuration, I needed to be able to do more with less. In other words, I didn't want to have large crews of men on. But I was burdened with this process in the fall of how do I handle these leaves? And I come from the school of blowers and vacuums and mowers and tarps and all that physical grunt type stuff. But I always thought in terms of effort versus results. And over time, I started thinking of ways where I could, at the time I was thinking, cheat and grind the leaves up and leave them in place. But what I started to realize when I examined the following season, and then the following fall, and the following season, there was no detriment. I wasn't cheating on the properties. And actually, I started to see benefits to the properties. And then I pushed the envelope further until I got to the point two or three years ago where literally we take nothing from our properties in the autumn. We'll run over the leaves early autumn, let them go right into the lawn. When that big surge comes down about mid-November, we may have to uh, blow the leaves to target areas. We grind them up, we fire it back into our target areas, our ground cover, our planting beds. And then what happened after that? My guys who work with me part-time fell in love with it. If you have guys working the crew, you know how exhausting it can be to have to bring things to the curb side to be able to take it up by vacuums. You know the burdens of clogging vacuums, time dumping, hitching and unhitching, trying to time where your next job is going to be so you can park your vacuum. I don't need to tell you all the headaches with having the attach the vacuum, take the vacuum off, or schlepping tarps up into trucks and guys jumping on the piles to try and pack them in. All that goes away. Put the mulching blades on, put the mulching attachment on, Adopt the love and leave them principle, and you're going to see your autumns are going to be a breeze. It's going to be a delight to finish the season off in such effortless fashion. I took a three or four seasons to actually measure what I did in the autumn and what were the results come next spring, and throughout the course of the following spring and summer season, how long it actually took for the leaves I chopped up, and if I put them in, left them in the lawn or put them in the beds, what was the result? What was the outcome? And I was astounded to find out what I had been lugging around and having wrestling and, and, and fighting matches with in all the years prior turned out to be a nothing event at all. When we chopped these leaves up finely enough, as these devices do, left them in the lawn, left them in the beds, we started to immediately see improvements in the 
quality of the soil in the beds, uh, loaded with earthworms, earthworm castings, nice, rich, beady soil. So let's talk about what happens when these leaves go into the soil. And I've learned from some very good people, in addition to what I've learned, observed, and taken notes over the years. I'd encourage anyone to look at the work of Paul Sachs, look at the work of Jeff Franks from Long Island. Uh, they have published material out there. And get familiar with that material, and then look how it works with you over a course of a season or two. And what you're going to find is when you're re reintroducing this material, this organic material to the properties, because this is what I found, is I have spongier soil, absorbs water better, I go into and come out of droughts much better in my lawns. I'll see my plants holding up better during those stressful periods when we may go for a period of rain, period without rain and uh, high temperatures in the summertime. And when you put this material back into the ground, all the microbial life that's in the soil flourishes and blooms. And in the process of the relationship of one digesting another and eating another, they're actually releasing the true fertilizers that the soil needs. See, when we're out there injecting and dropping pellets and so forth, we're just putting down a, a synthetic food, sort of like a short fix, whereas when we're doing this process, we're creating a food source and a food cycle. And the plants just really, really benefit from that. Uh, again, you can see it when you're at the stress points, summer and heat. You can see the lawns that are, have healthy soil and the ones that have poor soil. You can see the plants that have healthy soil, how well they're able to endure during those uh, challenging times. One of the best areas to be putting these shredded leaves are if you see areas of bare soil or in the past you've been cleaning your properties and leaving areas of bare soil and in November, December, got to stop that. Chop up the leaves, put this light mulch covering, covering over the top of the soil and you're set. You're now helping to prevent erosion. You're putting the material back where it can then biodegrade and leach back into the productive zone, the root zone for the plants and it's a win-win all around. And then I start to see the benefits of reduced blower time thereby addressing the noise problem. Many communities are, are uh, frustrated with the overabundance of noise uh, with the use of these blowers. I began to see and measure the, the cost benefits in terms of uh, my time. And gradually I start pressing the envelope more and more in each season, seeing how much I could grind up and leave, how much I could grind up and leave, to the point right now on the properties I care for, 100% in the footprint, done. There are those who say, that doesn't work on every property, I can't, I can't do it, and that's true. It may not work on every property. There may be those properties that have a very awkward ratio of space of yard and a few mighty trees around it, or they have a lot of concrete paver pool areas, and there's really not that green area. They have very little lawn space or bed area to discharge of it. And I'm not saying 100% this can be done across the board. What I am saying is on most properties here in Southern Westchester that have a balance of yard space and leaf uh, tree canopy, you absolutely can lose all your leaves in your footprint to your property. There's a growing demand, a consciousness that's developing out there with clients who are going to want to see this performed on their properties from the standpoint of their cost of living in the villages, the tax burden, or just from the environmental standpoint. There is a growing awareness. So either you can be on the forefront and be one of the first companies to be initiating this process, or you can be on the side of the catch-up and the me-toos. In the past two years, I became involved in the political process in our communities, and I was concerned about the way the autumn clamp affected our budgets. And when we started looking into the village level, the town level, the county level, the numbers are pretty serious. And just put all three things together. It benefits my business, benefits the environment, benefits the municipalities, and the costs. It's a it's a win-win-win all the way around. There's no reason not to undertake this process. It'll save you time, it'll save you money, and the benefits speak for themselves. Like to mention, we have these cards available, educational cards, both in English and Spanish. Step-by-step -step how-to. There are uh, there is information on the website showing the process how it's actually done. So please get a hold of one of these cards. Come to the uh, future trainings. Get the word out to your uh, fellow business people out there. Share this knowledge. Uh, it's going to benefit everybody.